You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. One year. He's gone. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. One of the major benefits of my work is the capacity that it provides you with understanding the way that a relationship works between a narcissist and maybe another narcissist, but usually non-narcissists. Often this is a romantic relationship or familial one, but can also include work relationships, social relationships, neighborly relationships, and so forth. It's like being given a key to understanding much of human behavior, and repeatedly, those who've accessed my work through blog articles and the videos, those that have consulted with me by way of their response and feedback, have expressed their gratitude for not only being able to achieve freedom through what I've explained to them and the advice that I've given them, but they often remark upon the enlightenment that they've received in terms of understanding so much of the world around them, what has gone on in their past relationships, what has occurred in relation to understanding their clients or their suppliers or their friends or family members and so forth. It really is like having the scales removed from your eyes and understanding so much more about the way that certain human beings behave. One aspect of this is to understand the nature of the narcissistic dynamic where you have a narcissist and their victim in a romantic setting. Where this has led to the scenario as it has with Harry and his wife of narcissist and intimate partner primary source, there are just three outcomes. Either he will escape, she will disengage from him, or neither of those two things will happen, and there will be a roller coaster of devaluing behaviours with respite periods until the day one of them dies. I have explained elsewhere that the most likely outcome is that she will disengage from him, that he will be thrown in the dumpster. Naturally, with such instances and scenarios, one is repeatedly analysing the information that come, becomes available to ascertain whether those predictions remain current or whether adjustment ought to be made for them. And as a consequence of more recent events, I have revised my view as to what is going to happen between Harry and his wife. I do not see that theirs is going to be a relationship that will continue as a roller coaster until one of them dies. Nor do I see, notwithstanding recent information, that he is suddenly going to find enlightenment or find that the devaluing behaviours have become too much so that he departs. The reason being is that he doesn't have any intervening support networks, she still has a use for him, and thus her tendrils remain wrapped around him, continuing to manipulate him, and ultimately it is going to be her that decides when the relationship is over, not him. There is also a very significant bonding factor that keeps him in place. The children. Whilst there are those that believe that the children do not exist, it seems most likely to my mind that they do, albeit that she did not carry them. Nevertheless, they're Harry's children, and he has emotional empathy, considerable emotional empathy for them, and would not want to be apart from them for longer than is necessary. This is the factor which is seized upon by his emotional thinking and the fact that he still loves his wife, bewildered as he is as to her conduct, and why he will not escape. The likelihood of an intervening factor is so low because he has been so ostracised from those external support networks. On the Markle side, those who are familiar with the way that she's behaved and sought to warn him, they have no contact. Doria is used as a lieutenant by Harry's wife to keep Harry in check. His own family, particularly his father and his brother and his sister-in-law, have little or nothing to do with him. They are not able to make him see. They are not able to intervene to aid an escape. Thus, this leaves us with disengagement, and I remain of the view 
that disengagement will occur. There are five triggers for disengagement. The first is that the narcissist has been having an affair with somebody else and instinctively recognises that that person now proves a better option than the incumbent intimate partner primary source and thus they are disengaged from and the affair partner is promoted to intimate partner primary source. There is a swapping of those roles. An alternative is where the narcissist finds that their victim is no longer functioning. They've in effect broken down or they no longer pose any real use to the narcissist. That is a clear risk for Harry. A third instance is where the narcissist has, called massive wounding, has received massive wounding from the victim. I do not see that as likely to occur. The fourth is where the victim causes massive exposure of the narcissist in terms of their behaviours, which threatens control so great the narcissist has little option other than to disengage. Again, I do not see that as likely. And finally, there is the instance where, in effect, the victim has seen through the narcissist and therefore becomes so difficult to control that the narcissist decides that it is better to kick them out before it gets any worse. With regard to Harry, the possibilities are potentially all five of those disengagement triggers, but I don't see three and four as applicable at all. Five is a possibility, but I see it more likely that the basis for disengagement will either be that she's found somebody else, or that he simply isn't worth her while any longer. Thus, I still see that disengagement will occur, but now I see it as happening sooner. I see that within a year, he will have been booted. Why do I say that? Well, we know, for instance, that she had been sniffing around Getty, although the family closed that off, Getty's family, so that Harry's wife wasn't able to pursue the billionaire further. She has been attending parties on her own, which suggests that she's out there sniffing for a replacement, lurking around on the prowl, and is both devaluing Harry to a greater extent by not including him, and also availing herself of the opportunity to put herself out there. There was her non-attendance at the coronation. This, of course, was driven by the fact that her narcissism recognised that there was a risk in her attending with regard to repeated and sustained wounding from a hostile press, a hostile populace, and the cold shouldering that she would receive from the royal family. But it is also indicative of how she sees the use of the royal family as particularly waning. Yes, she utilises the title still, Yes, she insists that her children are known as prince and princess, but beyond that, she has no further need for the royal family, and that, of course, impacts upon Harry's usefulness. There has been the comparative failure of the shit flicks docuseries and arsy wipes. That means that that will be blamed upon Harry, in terms of perhaps his non-participation largely in arsy wipes, and the fact that he has not provided her with the support that she deems appropriate. It will join a long list of transgressions that are forming in her mind by which she wishes to punish Harry. And the fact of those failures means that she's going to need somebody else who's of greater use. The Prince of Pink Pancakes was a huge step up for her in terms of prestige, status, networks, money and fame. But she now has that fame or infamy, dependent upon how you look at it, and believes that she can stay there of her own accord. She has now gained access to networks and the relevant agents that would support that. And she's done so, essentially, without Harry. Yes, she was only recognised because she was Harry's wife, but now she's scrambled to that position. She can sit there and say, you help me get here, but I don't need you any longer to stay here. I can do that over my own accord. And therefore, whilst he provided many advantages to getting her into the position that she finds herself today, a combination of his waning usefulness, some of the things that have happened, more of that in a moment, and, of course, her own self-absorbed ambition means that she believes that she's perfectly capable of not only staying where she is, but climbing even higher, but without him. 
The disclosures and the reaction to spare were unfavourable in the main. That has diminished Harry's stock, and thus, as I've explained in parts past him, she hung him out to dry in that regard. She's been collecting the awards, for her, saying that she is the one that is climbing within their partnership, and not him. Where are Harry's rewards? Where are his awards? There are none. He has been retreating to bolt holes. Most likely a combination of the devaluing behaviours that he's received so that he seeks some kind of sanctuary and solace, but also note she's content enough to allow him to do that. She is not so bothered as to need to assert control over him by ensuring that he is there each and every day, and that when he disappears to these bolt holes, it will most likely provide her with opportunity to engage with other people, telephone calls, messaging, maybe even in person, and also something that can be thrown in his face, you keep leaving us, both in terms of suggesting that he is disloyal and treacherous, but also that he's a poor husband. He's Admissions about his drug use, as I've explained elsewhere, they have been facilitated by Harry's wife and also her mother, and they'll be thrown in his face as examples of his poor parenting, and another reason why she needs to get rid of him. Nothing was done with regard to the recent wedding anniversary, at least in terms of publication and promotion. Again, that is indicative that she is not interested in that, and that sees his usefulness waning. His isolation is also likely to stoke his own fires of revolt against her. Not to the extent that he will leave, but to the extent that it will provide her with repeated threats to control, which she will then nullify, and will cause in her narcissistic mind to see him as not only of little use, but increasingly awkward. And therefore, he offends the need for her to control and doesn't provide any benefits alongside it. Therefore, why keep him? In some instances, an appliance which provides excellent amounts of fuel, tremendous character traits and brilliant residual benefits is worth fighting over, even where they prove a little more difficult than usual to control. But where that individual's fuel is on the wane, where their character traits have become exhausted and where their residual benefits are not once they once were, then in such circumstances, the fact that they are also proving more difficult to control than they once were means that the narcissism determines this person isn't serving our needs. And remember, Harry is purely there to serve her needs. Finally, there is the recent incident in New York. To my mind, that's a jump-the-shark moment, that it was so ridiculous, but it has so many repercussions. So many people saw through the transparency of the suggestion that it was near-catastrophic, both in terms of mainstream media and social media, that it caused repeated threats to her control and has caused her to need to have a scapegoat, which will be Harry, thus diminishing his standing even further. However, from Harry's point of view, you could see that he wasn't in on this scam and that he looked visibly shaken and perplexed and anxious at what was occurring. Thus, that will have caused him to retreat more from her, which she will then see as further evidence of his treachery. The problems that have arisen from the New York debacle also demonstrate that people simply have had enough of their behaviours. And with him going to London without her providing him with any support with regard to his court case, that is demonstrative of the fact that she is moving away from him. The fact is, Harry is becoming more difficult to control, but more importantly, his usefulness to her has becoming so diminished that his disengagement is now coming faster than it once was, once was. And in the circumstances, I see that she will disengage from him in approximately one year. Do you agree with me? Do you think this is an accurate summary based upon the narcissistic dynamic between these two people and the surrounding facts? Do you agree that that is a fair estimation? Do you think that it will take longer? Do you think it will happen sooner? Or do you think she won't disengage from him? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.